Hi, listeners. This is Katie Crow, your host of Uplifting Your Life. In this week's episode, we are going to talk with Dr. Mandy Holling Rausch and her journey to becoming a small business owner and entrepreneur, her dreams and goals that led her to become a chiropractor, and what she loves and what is uplifting her life today and always. listeners. Welcome back to Uplifting Your Life. This is Katie Crow, your host. And today we are here with Mandy Holling Rausch. And I'm really excited for you guys to get to meet her. Um, today we're going to talk a little bit about um, self-care and what that can look like in your life. So I've brought Mandy here to the studio to present a little bit about that. And we're going to talk a little bit more. Um, so first, I just want to introduce you to Mandy. Hi, Mandy. Hello. Hey, how are you today? Fabulous. Staying warm in here. Yes. It is a snowy day outside. Yes, this is not my favorite season. No, no. Halloween Absolutely should be still just warm. leaves crunching. There's no crunching leaves. They're soggy now. No, it's they're over. gross. Yeah. yeah gross leaves. <laughs> Yeah, so we get to deal with that, but we're nice and warm in here today. So, Mandy, um, let me just start with just tell us a little bit about you. Well, let's see. I'm a chiropractic physician. I've been in practice. Mm -hmm. It'll be 14 years um, this January. So uh, I'm all about taking care of people right? all the time, Yes, every day. I love it, or I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, and what I do find, you're talking about self-care, I do find my ladies are the worst, of course, self care. I, of course, Your because worst. so many women are like that. We, I mean, not everybody, but a lot of women tend to put other things first. You put, put everything, everything first, first, except you. Mm -hmm. So I like to uh, train all of my um, patients to think of themselves, because as I say, uh, if you're not taking care of you, nobody else is going to do it. Absolutely. So you got to put you first yeah. and you got to take time to do things for yourself. Right. Um, for example, for me, because I take care of people all day, I've got to take care of myself or I won't be there to take care of you. Exactly. So yeah. I do well, cool. massage every week mm -hmm. um, and I get adjusted every week. Yeah. And I've changed my diet recently, which has been really good. Right. Right. And all those things we can dig into and, and, discuss how that really changes your life outside of just day-to-day -day stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more other than outside of work, um, your family, friends, interests, hobbies. Um, hobbies is movies. I love okay. movies, all movies. And I watch the scary ones when my husband's out of town, which is a lot. So I get to watch the scary ones when he's gone because okay. he won't watch those. And so you watch them alone? Absolutely. Oh with the gosh. two dogs. I got cuddle. I got cuddle dogs. So, you know, they're there. They don't know it's scary. Right. So okay. I can watch them when he's gone. So okay. this is the great time of year for those. Yeah. And then um, for me, it's just my myself and my husband. And then mm -hmm. we have two fur babies. Mm -hmm. So um, and they're adorable. Yes. Atlas and Zeus. Because, you know, if you're going to be a small dog, you need a big name. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, and then besides that, uh, that's really um, just taking care of family and mm -hmm. then taking care of my family, extended family that mm -hmm. come into my office. That's pretty much what I do most of the time. Yeah. You have quite a bit of family that comes into your office. Yes. Yeah. Well, who else would they go see? Right. Right. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So tell us where you're from. I am from Des Moines area. I went to uh, Urbandale and then uh, West Des mm -hmm. Moines Valley. And then I kept saying I was going to go west. Uh -huh. And then I kept going east. So I went to Iowa City. And then I went to Palmer and Davenport. And the furthest west I ever got was back to Des Moines. Oh. <laughs> so you did go west. <laughs> I did go west. Coming back west. I just came back west okay. instead of going like California west. But, uh -huh. you know, that was as close and as I got. So what rooted you here in Des Moines? Family. Of course. So, I mean, I could go somewhere else where I didn't know people or I could go where there's a support system. And I think a support mm -hmm. system is important. A little bit of self-care right there. Absolutely. Yes. Um, so tell us just a smidge about your education and what made you um, jump into chiropractic care. Um, I went to the University of Iowa when I was pre-med. Mm -hmm. I worked at the hospital. I worked with patients. I worked in the OR, the ER. Nothing really jived with me. 
um, for what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Right. Um, so then I actually, after I graduated, got in an accident, went to see a chiropractor for the first time. And mm-hmm. I was like, hallelujah, this is what God intended me to do. And that was mm-hmm. it. So mm-hmm. I enrolled in Palmer, um, got accepted, then told my dad, who's a retired MD, mm-hmm. was not happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How um, did that conversation go? Oh my gosh. He was not happy with me, but now he comes in and sees me all the time. Isn't that funny? Yeah, it was How a conversion event. Kind of yes, a little bit. You had to be converted. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, and see how he can use that as a little self care. Absolutely. Yeah. So he does. He does acupuncture, and through acupuncture, I've actually gotten him back to running after fifteen years of not being able to run after three uh-huh. knee surgeries. And he's seventy two. Right, and running. Yeah. So that's pretty amazing. Cool. Absolutely. Cool. I want to talk a lot more about that. That's pretty cool. But um, we are going to take just a little bit of a break. We'll come back and we're going to talk a little bit more about Mandy's business. What made her start her own business? What it's like to be an entrepreneur in today's small business world and what it's like to be an entrepreneur as a woman. Hey, this is Margie. Join the journey by calling in and leaving a message with your questions or comments. Anything you want to share goes at 855-776-6147 or record it on your phone and email it to us at info at farmher.com. We look forward to hearing from you. All right. Welcome back to Uplifting Your Life with your host, Katie Crow, and today our co-host, Mandy Holling Roush. Um, on this segment, we're going to talk a little bit about jumping into the small business world and what that looks like for Mandy and her business. So Mandy, tell me a little bit about um, jumping into the entrepreneur world and why you wanted to start a small business. Well, for me, jumping in, I, I don't do anything half Okay. I either go 100% or I sure. don't go. Okay. So when I uh, graduated from Palmer, I got out and I said, I'm 30 years old. I don't want to work for somebody else. Mm-hmm. Went and got a SBA by myself uh-huh. and just opened my office and then yeah. prayed. Yes, right? <laughs> You're like, it's going to be okay. It's all going to be okay. Yes, that's a little bit of starting a small business is just having faith. Yeah, praying, you do praying. because you have to find your passion. And then once yeah. you find your passion, then everything else follows after that. So even my banker, he couldn't understand why I wanted to name it Hauling Wellness Center. Mm-hmm. He goes, I don't get it because that was 14 years ago. Mm-hmm. Wellness was not a big. It wasn't a big it thing. It was not then, big. Right. People weren't concerned about their, you know, inner body and all of that. Um, no, so they yeah. weren't. Yeah. So when I, and now he gets it. So now yeah. now when I talk okay. to him, he's like, oh, I get the vision. I get it. I get what you're trying to do. So now um, with, you know, wellness and um, and I really wanted a place for um, people to go where they have one stop for all everything that they need wellness. Correct. Yes. So, yeah. So it's like you don't have to go to one place and then go to another place and then go to another place. You can just come in and we do massage and chiropractic and acupuncture. We're now doing nutrition and um, we're doing nutrition and metabolism reset, which Mm -hmm. is the the food I was telling you about, how Mm -hmm. I switched that. Mm -hmm. So getting hormones reset. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many ladies you know that have like weird, whacked out hormones (laughs) and then they're storing fat. of them. And you're like, how am I storing everything I eat? Yeah. Well, anyway, so, so I'm you found with that. this passion, absolutely, and decided to start a business so that you can help people and prayed a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but now, I mean, it's all come together. But really, when you're going in to do a business, and if you're really going in to do something for yourself, you have to be 100 percent passionate about mm-hmm. it because otherwise, it's just it's not going to work. If you're right. not 100% on board, always. it's just not going to go. Always. Because if there's no passion, there's no dream, there's no drive. Absolutely. Right. And it will fall apart, of course. So you talked about this just a little bit before um, of why you chose chiropractic care after your car accident and how that led you to fall in love with that kind of care. Tell me about um, how that drove you to go to school for that. Well, what, I, what decisions went through your head? Well, it really was uh, like 
when I look at my life, I was always really good at sciences and I was mm-hmm. always good with three dimensional art. So very okay. good with my hands. That mm-hmm. was always my thing. And I was like, okay. what do I do? Surgery? Do I do, okay. you know, after being in the OR, I love surgery, uh-huh. but I wanted a life. Y- um, yeah. Female surgeon. I don't know if those no go life. hand in they hand. Don't. No, no, they really don't. So then um, I graduated. I was interviewing for pharmaceutical sales rep positions okay. and I got, it's actually a go-kart injury. Oh, there wasn't even a big car oh, involved. Well, okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh, but you're traveling, but I was, I was, yes, I, so I had whiplash. I couldn't mm-hmm. move my neck without using my hands. Mm-hmm. So I let one of my friends talk me into going and seeing a chiropractor okay. for the first time. And my dad had always told me, don't ever go see one of those. Right. Um, but I went anyway. Mm-hmm. And uh, so then once I went, um, all the pains that I had had, like going through school, back pain, headaches, my low back, all that yeah. actually went away. And I was like, that's it. That's what I'm supposed to do. So I enrolled it. I mean, I told you, I'm yeah. either 100% or not right. at all. So you jumped on board. Got all my financing for school, jumped in, then told my dad. Uh-huh. That yes, whole that whole conversation. That was, that was fun. Yep. Um, and so when I, and then once I got in there, I just... It was my thing. Right. So then Good. I've added to that since since I've graduated, you know. So mm-hmm. um, how have you added to that? Uh, added uh, acupuncture training and mm-hmm. then nutrition supplements. Right. Things okay. like that. Mm-hmm. So you yeah. just add to your right. educational base. So that you can be more than one stop. Yes. Yeah, you're an all stop. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So the other thing is with your business... Um, dig a little deeper in what you do for your clients that help them with their self-care. And I know there's different sections of your business for that. So Mm -hmm. just give me a little overview. Well, in general for self-care, the first thing I do, um, and I don't even think my patients realize I do it, but I have special music playing in the waiting room. And if I have women that come in like, you know, type A, really tight, flying right in the front door Uh I actually let them sit there for two minutes in that nice relaxing music oh yeah because you know they don't know they They don't know they need it yeah Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is I have conversations with people about getting stress under control Mm -hmm. you've got to calm it down Mm -hmm. I mean and if you know um, if there's anything I could do to help them um, with that but that's fabulous other conversation I have is like I was saying before you've got to put yourself first because the kids aren't Nobody else is going to do it. The kids are kids first, right? Mm -hmm. But if you do not make time for yourself, Mm -hmm. nobody else is going to do it. And in today's world, I mean, there is stress everywhere. And if you're a parent and you've got some kids, I mean, you're just running them around everywhere. And that's always taking top priority Mm -hmm. before stopping and getting some, you know, mental health, self health, all of that. Well, and all that is everybody's available all the time. Yes. You've got to put the phone down. You've got to turn the phone off. You've got to take time to meditate. What do you tell your clients with that? Do you say limit your own screen time? I mean, we limit our our kids' screen time. Yeah, but not your own. Right. But don't you think it'd be a great idea? Absolutely. Hey, adults, limit your screen time too. You know, your kids are at home. There's not going to be a big emergency. Turn the phone off. Right. Have dinner with your family. Turn the phone off. No, no electronics. Right at the table. Spend that connection time because a lot of people are becoming disconnected. Mm-hmm. They can they sit at the table more. together. Yes, and they're absolutely. all looking at their phones. Yeah. Yes, and I've even seen that in my own house. That, and yeah, you're just you're together, but you're not. You know, so you're occupying the same space. Sure, but you're not. Yeah, present. but how could life change if you? We're present. Yeah. So you need to be more present in your life. Right. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So, and then elaborate a little bit more on um, how, how else in your business you help with self-care. So uh, the other things that I do, of course, is, is nutrition. Um, Mm -hmm. I counsel people on nutrition on how they can change their diet to Mm -hmm. reset hormones. Mm -hmm. Also to get some of that, you know, you get stressed, you start putting on some weight Mm -hmm. and then you get stressed about the weight and Mm -hmm. then you're stressed about the stress about the weight. It's evil cycle. It is a very vicious cycle. So I am helping people with that, um, getting, getting that under control, um, and then getting their diets changed and their lifestyle changed. Mm -hmm. And once you get their diet changed, they handle things better. Really? Yeah, yeah, because when you're putting you're putting poor food in your body, you have poor fuel. Right. So right. if you're putting good fuel, you know, instead of being tired all the time, you have energy. Right. Um, 
And people don't even realize how tired they are till they're not tired. And then they go back to eating something that they hadn't had before and for a long time that they shouldn't be eating. And they realize really quickly why they were so tired. Right. Oh, yeah. absolutely. It's like positive energy coming in, mm-hmm. positive energy going out. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And it can go the opposite way with negative energy, bad food, empty calories absolutely. going in. It's going to be negative energy going out. So, yeah, But I find it fun to see that. Like I had one lady in the other day. She used to crave Snickers. Uh, and the victory moment for me is when she came in, she goes, Doc. I'm craving chicken. I'm like, yes, it's a victory. <laughs> that is a good victory. A huge and victory. it's great when you know you're helping others too, isn't yeah, it? It is joyful. It's very yeah. joyful. Awesome. Awesome. Guys, we're going to take just a really quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about being an entrepreneur in today's small business world. Hey everybody, this is Margie Geiler Alanis from Shining Bright by Farm Her. I want to tell you about a friend, a community member, a business owner that we really believe in. Our house was kind of a shell when we bought it and we've been working on updating and changing and adding things on. And we found a local contractor that we can trust, that we love the work that they do. And that is Remodel Works. Check them out at remodelworksdb.com. They're right here in central Iowa. You'll love them. Hello, and welcome back to Uplifting Your Life. This is Katie Crow, your host here today with Mandy Holling Rausch of Holling Wellness Center. In our next segment, we're going to talk a little bit about being an entrepreneur, especially a women entrepreneur in today's small business world. So, Mandy, tell me a little bit about what you love with being an entrepreneur. Uh, well, I'm my own boss, so that's great. That's great. That's great. Although we, when you're most people don't realize when you're your own boss, you're also your biggest critic. Always. And you don't take time off like you should. Mm-hmm. Even isn't that funny though? Even though you don't have to apply for PTO, you don't have. Oh my you gosh! Know, but I, yet, I have patients that come in. They go, "Can't you just take PTO?" And I go, "Just think about what you just said." Mm-hmm. Nobody's paying me for time off. No, and that is the downfall of working for yourself. Right. If you take time off, you PTO. Gotta, what is that? I don't know what that is. So you've got to pay yourself while being gone, plus go on vacation. Mm-hmm. So that's part it's of just, the downfall it's with just it. Just TO. It's just yes. It's just time off. Which I'm trying to schedule more time off. And I also have learned um, over the years to have very strict boundaries. Good. For myself. Right. Um, Like I used to when I first opened, I didn't take a lunch. Mm -hmm. I just ate when I could. Mm -hmm. That's not good for you. Right. And now I actually close so that Mm -hmm. my body can have time to rest. Mm -hmm. I can digest. I can Mm -hmm. do paperwork, Mm -hmm. which is a never ending struggle. Um, So you have to take that time. Right. And then I, I don't work all day on Friday because that's when I do my self-care. I mm-hmm. have to have that time. Right. So to fill your cup. Absolutely. So that you can help others fill theirs. Yeah. And I can tell on weekends when I come home that I have not given myself enough filling the cup because, mm-hmm. you know, you just takes a little bit longer to recover for the next week. Correct. Sure. Oh, I feel you there. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Especially then if it's the end of the weekend and then Monday's coming and you're like, oh, shoot. I didn't do anything to refill my cup and I've got to pour out again tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it is really crucial. You're starting with an empty cup. It's hard to fill an empty cup when you don't have anything in there to give out. Sure. Yeah. So, um, and that's when, you know, I can find people being more grumpy or shorter Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. they just don't have any more to give and you know that they need to refill that cup. Right. So, okay. So one thing about being your own boss is that you get to make your own schedule, right? Mm -hmm. But then what do you do for time management other than taking those two hours for lunch and paperwork? What are other important tips for time management? Um, Making lists, lists help. Oh, you did say you're a list maker. Yes, Mm -hmm. lists lists do help, Uh, especially when you have a lot of things to get to. And with me, I've got to find time in between everything else I've got going on in order to get to the list. So I always prioritize what is the what is on fire 
versus yep. what can wait. <laughs> right. <laughs> Put the fires out first. Fire out first. Everything else comes second. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that helps. And then also um, just having very strict boundaries on your time. Mm-hmm. So even though I have people that, you know, would love to come in 24 seven, if I was there, they come in 24 seven, right? The door does not unlock until I open, right? And it locks when I'm closed. Right. And if you're five minutes late, Mm-hmm. And That's I've heard bad. before, and I definitely agree that clients will respect you more mm-hmm. when you have those boundaries put in place. Well, because they can't walk all over you. Right. You know, there yeah. are people that just just give and do all this mm-hmm. stuff all the time. Or, and you then, know, they send an email at 10 o'clock oh my at gosh. night and they're expecting a response. But if you have an auto response saying, hey, thanks for your email, I'll get back to you between the hours of... I don't, I don't even have a response. I mean, I just, if it is past my business hours, I will look at it. And if it's an emergency, yeah, you know, you need to go to the sure. ER or you, yeah, sure. this is not my cup of tea. Go to the ER. Sure. That's one thing. But if it's just like, Hey, can I come in on Monday? And it's a Saturday. I'm like, um, I will check that when I get back into the office mm-hmm. after 10 AM on mm-hmm. Monday. Yeah. You have to have, you those have boundaries. to have those boundaries or you'll burn out. Well, yeah. Or just and, be overwhelmed. And you're right. People do respect that you have boundaries. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you don't have any, they know you don't. Yeah. They know you don't. Right. So what what are a couple other things that you love about being an entrepreneur? Um, Let's see. For me, it would be I'm my own boss, so mm-hmm. I can fire myself and then rehire <laughs> myself on Monday. Um. And then that your um, that your income potential is only limited by how many hours that you put in and what your drive is. Correct. So nobody yeah. else determines my worth. I determine my worth. Sure. And, and you get back is, what you put in. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there does have to be some self control and you know all of that to put into a business so that you can get back what you desire. Yeah, and learning your value. Mm-hmm. You know, over time, after 14 years, you you know what your value is taking care of other people. You know right. what you have to give. When you first start, like when I first opened, I'm like, I hope you like me. Right. I hope I please do okay. Come back. <laughs> yeah, please come back and refer all your friends. Right. Now it's like, I know I can help you. What can I do for you? Right. It's Let more, it's you. less about me questioning my value uh-huh. as, because I know that versus... Uh-huh. Now it's like, I know my value. I know I can help you. What yes. can I do for you versus I hope you like me? Right. You know, it's it's completely shifted mm-hmm. to more focused on who's in front of me. Good. Yeah. You Good. have to get over your fear. Right. And because you're your own boss, you know your value and you are not craving it from someone else. No. Mm-mm. You know it and you know you can give it, yeah. which is fantastic. Okay. So with that knowledge also... What are some struggles with being an entrepreneur? Because I know there are a lot of women out there that want to quit their nine to five and start their own, their own business, their own venture. What are some struggles that you have run into, you continue to run into, um, and how have you overcome them? Um, Well, one of the struggles is, like I said, when you open, you Mm -hmm. have no income. Right. So um, for me, I lived with my parents Mm -hmm. when I opened up my business Mm -hmm. because I wasn't married. And so I just hung out in their basement because that way I could put everything I had into um, opening my business. And this dream you had to help others. Absolutely. So you have to sacrifice for things. I don't really call it a sacrifice. I got to hang out with my awesome parents. But, um, you know, you just there are sacrifices that go with it. You know, there Definitely. are when you're, you know, opening up. I mean, you're you're literally worried about how you're going to pay your bills because right. you're having five people come in in a week. Right. Versus 20 in a day. Sure. Like it is mm-hmm. now. In the beginning, it's like, oh, my goodness, did I mess this yeah. up? Yeah. <laughs> and if you have a small business that you have an overhead. Absolutely. The overhead doesn't go away. That doesn't go away. Nope. Mm-hmm. No, it yeah. doesn't. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so that's always a little bit of a struggle, I think, as a small business owner. But again, like we said, sometimes you just have to pray and hope and know that it's meant to work out and that it, that you're meant to follow that dream. Yes. And like I said, if you have that passion, it is your dream and that's what you want to do. People will follow. Yes. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. And you just have to hold strong to that dream and those goals that you set. Mm-hmm. You know, like you said, you are all in. 
Yeah. And you are willing to make the sacrifices to make it work. Yeah. And yeah. now, and now it's, it's just a hundred percent fun. Mm-hmm. Right? That's good. And that's what it should be. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Yes. So there's always struggles you can run into with small business. And, um, and also I think sometimes when you're doing something, it's a shot in the dark. It you is. know, it's like, I'm going to try this marketing skill or, you know, or whatever. And sometimes it's a shot in the dark and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And that's just how we grow and we learn. Yeah. You've got to, you got to have struggles to grow. You got to have struggles to learn. Yes. If, if everything's easy, you don't, yes. you don't grow as a person. Yes. I've heard fail fast, fail forward. Yes. You know, so we keep learning. Absolutely. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Thanks, Mandy. We're going to take a small break. We'll come right back and we're going to finish up with Mandy and talking about more. Hey guys, this is Margie from Farm Her. I want to remind you all that we have some really fun, functional, cute merchandise out on our store at farmher.com and fall has arrived in the farm her market we've got some new sweatshirts hoodies one of my favorite windbreakers out there so check it out at farmher.com and while you're there be sure to use the code shining bright and save 10 percent just for our listeners Hi, listeners. This is Katie Crow, back with Uplifting Your Life, here with Mandy Holling Roush. I'm really excited to get into this next segment. We're going to talk to her a little bit about her self care and what she's doing outside of work. Because when you're a small business owner, sometimes work can overtake your life. And so it's important for us, too, to fill our cups and to do our own self care. So, Mandy, what is your favorite thing to do for self-care? What are other things you do, harder things that, to get into the schedule? Um, and what are regular things that you love to put on, on for you? Uh, well, the biggest thing I do for um, self-care for me mm-hmm. because of my job um, would be doing the adjustments and the massage um, every week. Mm-hmm. Just because, like I said, if I if I'm not taking care of myself, I can't help others. Right. So if my body's falling apart, mm-hmm. I can't help your body. So tell me, you can't do your own adjustments. No, so you, I trade. Oh, that's perfect. I know enough of other chiropractors that we can swap. Yes. Yeah, yes. We do swap. That's perfect. I have a friend that's a hairstylist. And she kind of does the same thing. I'm like, yeah. so you cut your own hair? No, no, no. Oh my gosh, could you imagine trying to cut your own hair? <laughs> Not going to happen. I don't know if there's no. many people talented enough to backwards cut it in the mirror. No, I think your, I think your arms would fall asleep if Maybe. you did it that way. Maybe. So um, you trade it. That's wonderful. I trade. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I trade, um, I trade for um, my massage. So my massage therapist get uh, services for me. So mm-hmm. for example, acupuncture, they do mm-hmm. acupuncture and adjustments. Um, or they can do the sauna or the foot bath. I mean, there are a lot yeah. of different things that they do yeah. that we trade off for. So it, you don't want anybody to feel like you're taking, there has right. to be a give and take and yeah. it has to be equal right. both directions. Yeah. Um, so that works well for me. And that's just a, that's a hard And so role. is this something that you put on your regular schedule, weekly, monthly? Every week. Yes. Every Friday. week. That's mm-hmm. fantastic. Yeah. I so, need to add that to my schedule. If it's not, and that's what I tell my ladies, I go, if you don't schedule it, it's not going to happen. Oh, absolutely. So they oh, have I've heard to that. schedule it. Yeah, a thousand times. If it's not on your schedule, it just doesn't exist. Well, and then you think I'll get to it next week. And mm-hmm. then the next week goes by. And mm-hmm. the next thing you know, you know, it's been um, three months. Year. <laughs> yeah, a year. <laughs> and you're like, oh, wasn't I supposed to get my, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, I should get that on the schedule. Right. And I'm sure you would suggest this, that chiropractic care and massage go hand in hand. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. 100%. Mm-hmm. And people ask me which is better before or after. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Oh, that's great to know. Uh, because either you're relaxing the tissue to accept the adjustment better, or you adjust them and then do the massage to hold the adjustment better. Whichever way you want to oh, word yeah. that, it's it's all the same. Oh. It's just preference. Yeah, that's fantastic. So, um, yeah, it doesn't. For me, there isn't a there isn't a one way to do that. It's yeah. just get it done. Yes, that's good. 
That's good. Okay. So outside of massage and trade, what else are you doing for self-care? It can uh, look like it, you know, a thousand different things. Well, for me, I just finished, I, like I said, I was offering in my office, uh, a, a hormone reset, metabolism reset program. Mm-hmm. And I put myself through it first. Cause I always, you know, like to experiment on myself before I subject any sure. of my patients to anything that yeah. I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I'm like, if it's not going to work on me, it's not going to work mm-hmm. on anybody else. And this and is if, something you sell in your office. Yes. That is mm-hmm. something that I'm doing in my office with some really awesome people that are just really having great results. But mm-hmm. for me, I was, because of stress, I got into the point where I was 25 pounds overweight, mm-hmm. where, you know, when you bend over and you put your shoes on and you have to kind of move your tummy out of the way. Right. Yeah. I was tuck. at that. I was, yeah. I was like, oh, my tummy's kind of in the way. I got to move a little bit to the right. Um, but that was my, I've had it moment. Right. Um, so then I put myself on and mm-hmm. luckily my husband was loving enough to do it with me plus he was overweight um and, and then you have a buddy to we do have a buddy with? yeah mm-hmm. and so you have accountability partner yes i'm telling you if you have a spouse and they're they're in the same spot as you are yes. you better right get them on board yes and um, this happens you guys with um loving relationships mm-hmm. you get comfortable mm-hmm. yes mm-hmm. well that and with stress you know when you're opening a business and you've been doing it for you know quite a while and the right. stress piles on it piles on piles on over time next thing you know you're the highest weight you've ever been right and you because you're putting other things ahead first. of your self-care yes absolutely um so i dropped 25 pounds and 17 inches in six weeks that's great and i've kept it off so even better. Yeah, that was in June. So I yeah. am kept it off because I reset my metabolism or I mm-hmm. reset my BMI, BMR. So where even if it's Halloween and I want a, uh, you know, Twix, mm-hmm. the Twix is not going to throw me off like it used to. Right. So before when my hormones were out of balance, then everything you eat gets stored as fat. And you were craving the wrong things. Absolutely. Now I eat the one Twix and I'm like, man, that's really sweet. Right. Versus before I was like, oh, Twix, 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 Give Twix, Twix, more. Twix. Give Can I have more. another one? Oh, the whole bag's gone. <laughs> um, so yes, we both went through that and we both had really great. So now I'm doing that with my patients, which is because I know so many people that just, they don't know what to do or where to go mm-hmm. to get that help. Mm-hmm. And so I am there. I literally, they have to check in with me every day. So I'm mm-hmm. with them for... Um, eight to 11 weeks while mm-hmm. they're doing the program um, all the way through. Mm-hmm. So I always say, I hate to say I'm the monkey on your back, but I'm the monkey on your back. Yeah. I'm your accountability you know, partner. Yeah, sometimes we need that, right? Well, if you don't have to check in with anybody, guess what? You're not going to do it. You don't it. do it. No. That's true. And then they have to come in once a week to do measurements. And uh, I mm-hmm. have a biometric scale, so I can actually tell you percentage body fat, how much of that is bone, how much of that's water. Mm-hmm. So it's really, and metabolic age. I was surprised how many people are coming in with metabolic ages of 90. Wow. Which means very slow. Right. Really slow. But wow. we're... we're boost in their metabolism we're getting yeah. it back on track so we take them from a 90 to you know back where they need to back be. to where they're supposed to be Correct. hopefully below their actual age mm-hmm. um but yeah so i went through it and mm-hmm. now i subject other people to it and they like it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you're eating well well now i'm so used to eating this way yeah i mean that's the other part of it is it teaches you ways to eat where you're eating mm-hmm. nutrient dense Food. You're not mm-hmm. eating empty calories because you're, and that is self care. That is, it's huge self care because it's going to drop your inflammation. It's going to drop your pain levels. It's going to and help by with doing all that. so, it reduces your stress, your daily anxiety. Well, plus it makes you so where you're better capable of dealing with stress when it comes your way versus when your system is so overwhelmed that everything that hits you stresses you out mm-hmm. versus getting to the point where it's like, oh, whatever. <laughs> you got to get to the whatever point. And yeah. I've told women to do that. You just got to get to the point where you're like, whatever. Mm-hmm. It, it doesn't really matter. Will mm-hmm. it matter in five years? No. Then it's not worth, not worth the stress. over stressing about today. Mm-mm. Right. Instead, when you are giving yourself healthy health, uh, self-care and you're in a healthy mindset, it's easier to look forward at those things and think, well, this is how I solve it. Yeah. And, you know. Yeah, it's simpler to find those solutions when your system isn't in a state mm-hmm. of, of stress. Mm-hmm. So you are out there, you've set your, reset your metabolism, mm-hmm. 
and you're feeling good. You're filling your cup. Yes. So that you can turn around and help others because really it sounds like that's your biggest dream that you love chiropractic care, but you just love to help people. Yeah. I would love to help people feel better, whatever that means for them. So everybody's different. That's great. That's awesome. I love it, Mandy. We're going to take a short break and then we're going to come back another time, talk with Mandy a little bit about what she's doing outside of her job, um, what she's loving and what she's doing to uplift her life. Hey, this is Melissa with Tin Roof Market. Just want to share with you some of the products we make using goat's milk from our family farm. We make a variety of soaps and lotions using the goat's milk along with other natural ingredients, adding essential oils and fragrances to give them that amazing smell. Some of the scents to choose from are lavender oatmeal, double mint, eucalyptus spearmint, sweet orange, and many more. We also make a variety of lip balm, lip scrubs, and sugar scrubs. If you'd like to find out more, please check us out at www tinroofmarket.com, like us on Facebook, or follow us on Instagram. Hello, listeners. Welcome back. This is Katie Crow, your host here with Mandy Holling Roush, talking about her life as an entrepreneur, self care, and what she's loving. So we want to dig in a little bit, Mandy, with what you're loving right now outside of work, which is hard when you're a, when you're a small business owner. Outside of work is like, what are you talking about? <laughs> outside of work. It's always work. It's always with me. But what are you doing outside of work that you're loving, looking forward to? Uh, well, right now, I hate to tell everybody, but I am counting down to our uh, trip to Aruba. Fantastic. Counting down. No, literally, I'm like, oh, how many days? You're at days? I'm, yeah. Well, no, it's in December. But oh, uh, I can count down at days. days. That's days. Um, because I'm all about the beach. I'm yes. all about ionization and ocean that water D. and a happy little vitamin D. Yes. Um, so um, there's that, which I'm looking forward to, which is coming yes. up. And you've been there before. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, and you love it. Been there, you've got to go. I haven't been there. Uh, Aruba is their motto is one happy island. Mm-hmm. I mean, it literally is one happy island. I love they it. Just the weather's always the same. It is seventy two to seventy four at night. It is eighty two to eighty four during the day. It doesn't rain because it's literally a desert island. Mm-hmm. Um, there's always puffy clouds and a breeze, and literally you get up and it's the same. I love it. I know, it's like and Groundhog's you go to the beach, day, but at you're the like, beach. oh, it's a day again. Yeah. <laughs> So when you go there, what are you doing? What kind of vacationer are you? Are you like a, a beach, mm-hmm. water, like, book. Oh, like I am in relax and like yes. relaxation mode. Yes. Uh huh. Like uh, my husband and I went last year. That was our first time going. Mm-hmm. And we met this couple when we were there. And I, my husband literally said to me, I go, well, I should f- see if they're going because they go down the same time. He goes, mm-hmm. don't. Don't, because I just want to like not talk to anybody for like a week except <laughs> you. I'm like, oh, all about me. You want 100 percent? Yeah, 100 percent of me time. Okay, yeah. Um, but with um, with his travel as much as he's gone, I get it. Right, I get it. I'm gonna assume that when he's traveling, he's talking always. Yeah, always. And his days run about 5 a.m. to about 9 p.m. And so when he gets day. home, yeah, he's he's. He's done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, So, and then I also told him we are going to start taking quarterly trips. So he, he's not sure what that's going to look like yet. Mm -hmm. And you know, sometimes when you take time off and you're taking a trip, it doesn't have to be big. You know, this doesn't have to be a safer, you know, three years kind of a trip. I mean, even like I was talking about going down to uh, Kansas City for the 4th of July weekend because we had fun. Right. We went down for a couple days for a long weekend, but it's time away. And it's putting it on your schedule. It's got to be on the schedule. Even if it's scheduled as nothing, this time is just blocked off. Yeah. It's, it's, if it's not scheduled, it doesn't happen. Same thing with a massage. Same thing with everything. If Mm -hmm. it's not on the schedule, it's not going to happen. Well, eventually it'll keep getting pushed out and pushed out and pushed out. But you've just like your massage. Yeah. Not your massage. No, my massage. Mine's on my schedule. (laughs) (laughs) Um, 
but also, you know, spending time with family. And like mm-hmm. I was saying before about not having the phone yes. at the dinner table. Right. And extended family, when you're seeing them. Absolutely. Even, maybe even bigger deal to make sure you're not giving your attention to the social media network that doesn't care that you're on. No. They don't what, care. What value is it giving you? Right. Right. So um, do you have plans with family over the holidays coming up? I love the holidays. You I do. love Thanksgiving. I love making Thanksgiving dinner. So I'm already planning Yay. my Thanksgiving dinner. Uh-huh. I did figure out last year. Okay, ladies, put Thanksgiving dinner at like five or six in the afternoon. Because you know why? Why is that? I don't have to get up at the crack of dawn right. in order to make Nobody food. Nobody wants to put a turkey Nobody in the ma- oven in no. the middle of the night. No. Nobody wants to do that. Yeah. Uh, and then make stuff ahead of time the night before yes. and then put it in the oven. Yes. And, um, so yes, I'll be doing that with my family. And then we do, um, with my husband's family, we do Christmas Eve. So I get mm-hmm. to make them food again. Exciting. Um, so I like to cook. That's one of my things that mm-hmm. I do when I'm having you time doing other yeah, stuff. When you're yeah. not working yeah. for me, it's, it's relaxing is yes. to cook for others. Right. But and you get to cook healthy food and yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know about Thanksgiving. That I might know. be a little, you don't <laughs> want to know what goes into my mashed potatoes. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I can't believe I didn't bring this up. Speaking of Mandy's family. Mm -hmm. Our background, Mm -hmm. the whole reason I know Mandy is, let's see, when did I meet you? How old was I? Oh, geez. I don't know. 12? Had to have been. Maybe I was 12, I think, when I met you. Um, And I was best friends with Mandy's youngest sister, Megan. Yeah. And so Mandy's family was like a second family to me Mm -hmm. growing up. I was there all the time. So when she speaks about her mom and dad, I'm like, yeah, I know them. Like Mary and Bill. Cool. Yeah, I know. I know exactly who you're talking about. And I can just imagine what your family gatherings are like. Yeah, it's a bunch of talking, mm-hmm. sometimes inappropriate talking, but that's okay <laughs> because we all know that that's where that's going to go. Interrupting each other mm-hmm. all the time. Mm-hmm. My husband had to learn that. Yes, sometimes like, husbands have our, to learn that with those family, crazy families. You just got to keep up, buddy. Keep that's up. That's right. Keep up because you just, we jump all over the place, but mm-hmm. we all all of our brains work that way in our family. So mm-hmm. <laughs> we all understand the gaps. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's fun. So will you ha- Will you host Thanksgiving at your house? Yeah. And you love to do that. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll spend time with uh, my husband Rick's family for lunch. Mm-hmm. And what's great is I just throw the turkey in before. And then mm-hmm. by the time we go spend time with them, I'm not rushed. Come back right. and finish ours right. up. For because you can over. do holidays Later. unrushed. You can do holidays unstressful no what a concept I know I but know we've got to spread this word I'm telling you move your Thanksgiving dinner later in the day people mm-hmm. um Give because time. yeah you're not getting up stressed you're not right. fretting about it you're not that oh, I used to go to sleep at night and then fret about is my alarm clock going to get me up to put everything in the oven now I'm oh, like gosh. who cares <laughs> we eat when we eat we will eat when it's done <laughs> has a little button popped up nope not done yet <laughs> I love it. Okay, so tell me something in your life that is uplifting your life. Um, well, for me, daily, it's it's an uplift. Like what I do is, for me, is a God-given gift. Mm-hmm. And when I get in my own way, I don't do as well as a, as a physician as I do when I just let God do the work. All mm-hmm. I do is help you heal. That's all I'm there to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, it's uplifting every day. Not ever. Well, okay, I don't want to say not every day. There are days when it's not. Sure. Right. But, um, lawyer letters, all that stuff. But, right. um, the, uh, the rest of it, it, it really is. And then the other thing that I do is I do a lot of, um, reading mm-hmm. and meditating. So for me, that's, Great. that's uplifting. Yes. So, I think um, that's fantastic. I'll have to get you the name of the book. I can't remember. It's something about putting women, putting yourself first. And yeah. of course, I can't remember the title, but I'll let uh-huh. you know later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That would be great. I think so many women could use that in their life to, mm-hmm. to remember, to help put themselves first mm-hmm. in, in their daily life. Not once a week, not once a month, not once a year. You know, don't wait for your birthday. No. To put yourself time first. For yourself. Oh, and birthday. Come on. Let's do like every day. Right. To live every day like it's your birthday. Absolutely. Right. I call it my birth month. Heck my yeah. My husband goes, is this your birth month? I'm like, heck yeah. Let's move it to birth year. <laughs> hey, it's my birth year. And you're like, wasn't that last year? 
Yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Mandy, thanks so much for coming on to Uplifting Your Life today. I had a lot of fun talking and it was a lot of really good value what? and conversation. So thanks for coming. You bet. Thank and, you. Um, so if you guys are looking for a great chiropractor in the Des Moines area, go visit Dr. Mandy at Holling Wellness Center. Come see me. Yes. I'll help you get out of your own way. Yes. Yes. I love it. I love it. Thanks, guys. And we will be right back in just a minute. Hi, Uplifters. This is Katie Crow, your host of Uplifting Your Life. In next week's episode, we get to talk with Erin Hewitt. She is mother, wife, entrepreneur, blogger, postpartum doula, and now the president of Fem City of Des Moines. She's doing a lot of exciting things in our community as a mover and shaker, and I can't wait to have valuable, uplifting conversation. Hey, this is Katie Crow, owner of Uplift Fitness Studio. Uplift Fitness Studio is a boutique fitness studio located right in the heart of Grimes, Iowa, in the Governor's District. Uplift offers a variety of group fitness classes, such as yoga, cardio, Zumba, bar, and strength classes. All new students can get their first week free with no obligation. At Uplift Fitness, we are passionate about uplifting women in our community to be strong, healthy, and happy. We strive to make a difference in their lives by creating an environment that allows our members to obtain their fitness goals and enjoy their experience in comfort and safety. Visit our website today at www.upliftfitnessstudio.com. Hey listeners, this is Katie Crow once again from Uplifting Your Life. Um, I want to take just a second and just tell you thank you so much for listening to Uplifting Your Life podcast. Um, I had a lot of fun today talking with Mandy and I'm really excited to continue this journey and help you jump into this conversation so we can talk with more women entrepreneurs, more movers and shakers in our community and get more inspiring, valuable conversation going to help uplift your life. So Mandy, I just want to say thanks for coming on today. Absolutely. I really loved it. Um, I have to point out a couple things I loved most. Um, What you're loving about being an entrepreneur is your own boss. Mm -hmm. You get to put in what you get back. Absolutely. Which is really good. And and I think that's something that new entrepreneurs and small business owners can keep in mind as they're making their schedule. Yes. To always keep that flowing. And I love that you are filling your own cup. I had to learn that. Everybody's got to learn how to do that. It is kind of a learning process, isn't it? It is. I feel like little kids are so good at that. But where do we lose it? Probably when you have kids. <laughs> Maybe something like that. Because my little kids are like, yeah, I get everything I want. I have everything I need. I want more of this. I'm just going to get it. And so I think somewhere in the stress of life, sometimes we forget to say no to something so that we can say yes to something else. Yes. To say yes to the healthy, good, uplifting ideas and decisions. So I think it's really great that you're doing that. And it's also really inspiring that you um, did the um, met- metabolism reset on yes. yourself first. I try everything on myself yes, first. I, I won't give fantastic. a supplement if I haven't tried it on myself. Right. <laughs> right. Like, well, this one gave me purple dots. I better not that give this That is not one a good out. one. Throw that one out. (laughs) So I think it's great that you did that and that you can inspire others by doing that too. So you've inspired me with your self-care that you're doing. You're doing massages every week. So when are you scheduling yours? Okay. I need to schedule mine. I'm not going to push it off. I'm going to check in. But I have to be realistic. Yes. I'm going to do mine once a month. Okay. That's once a month is better than never. Which is once a month more than I'm doing now. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. So even just starting once a month, I think will be really beneficial for me because I'm, I'm a fitness teacher and I'm always moving and going and And you're probably tight in your muscles. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that'd be really good for me. So I'm going to do that. You better. I'm checking in. Yeah. Do good. Well, I'll come see you, Mandy. Um, and 
Listeners, I want to tell you what's happening on our next episode. We are going to bring in Erin Hewitt. She also, um, small world in Des Moines. I've known her since high school. Um, And she lives in the same community I do in Grimes. And she is a mover and a shaker in our community. She has a lot of really exciting things going on. She's a mom. She's a wife. She's an entrepreneur. She is a blogger. She is... um, the owner of uh, Des Moines Parent Magazine. She is a postpartum doula. And recently she jumped into the role as president of Femme City of Des Moines. So she has a lot going on. So it'll be a really cool, valuable, uplifting conversation. I'm excited to see what she has to say. So we'll talk with her next week. And in the meantime, um, I want to remind you to be good to you to be good to others and uplift your life. And with everyone, that's going to look a little bit differently for to be good to you. What are you doing to uplift your life? We talked with Mandy today about how she is being good to her and how she's uplifting her life and how she's being good to others every single day. I try. Every single day she's being good to others, which is good and we can all be inspired by that. So how can you in your life, be good to others. It can be a small act of kindness. It can be a big gesture. Everybody's going to be a little bit different. So take some time and think about that. And how can you put that into your everyday life? And how can that give back to you? So be good to you, be good to others and uplift your life. Again, how is that going to work into your daily life? Uplift your life. Everyone's going to look a little bit different with that. Is that going to be making your bed in the morning? Is that going to be drinking a cup of coffee? Is that uplifting to you? If it is, do it. If maybe cutting back on coffee is going to uplift your life, maybe do that too. So anyways, you guys, be good to you. Be good to others and uplift your life. I'm excited to talk with you again next week as we bring Erin into the studio and have really good conversation with her. And in the meantime, have a great week.